Hi folks, Rodney back again. Hey, I'm back out on the road, headed out to Wright. Uh, if any of you have not watched my videos before, uh, I'm actually located in Oregon. And currently we have a big, what they call Cedar Creek fire going on right now. So I'm gonna flip the camera around just so you can see what's going on here. So this is the current conditions. This is really close to the fire. Uh, obviously you see smoke everywhere. Um, local areas were evacuated. I think they've kind of moved back in now. But uh, they don't they don't have it contained yet. It's over a hundred thousand acres has burned so far. And uh, we did get some rain today, so hopefully that helps out quite a bit. Um, but I'm having to, to go out quite a ways before I can actually ride. Anyway, I want to give you a weekly update. So the current state of uh, Tacoma or <laughs> Tacoma of <laughs> Toyota's inventory uh, is a little bit bleak. Um, in talking about tundras, so customers have been asking me, said that hey, they had they had uh, tundra limited models on order, uh, but their dealerships are telling them that they're not getting any built, and that is true. So I went back and looked at inventory yesterday, and we currently have 14 gas version tundras on the way. 12 of them are of the SR5 model, and only two of them are limited model. Not seeing any 1794 or the platinum editions. Uh, on the hybrid version, we only have two coming in, and it looked like both of those were limited models. So what I'm seeing, kind of a trend going on right now, now the Tundra hybrids just hit the ground about a month ago, and what it looked like at the time is they were kind of using the the ton, or excuse me, the limited, the platinum, the 1794 edition. They were using those, I guess, features you would call them, uh, using them for the hybrid models. And so that's why we're seeing so many SR5 models coming out. It also takes more microchips to make a 1794 Platinum uh, Capstone and Limited model than it does an SR5. And that's another reason that you're seeing a lot more SR5s on the ground. Um, also, some of those up upgraded features, you know, things like Panorama View and 17, or excuse me, and the 14-inch uh, monitor. Uh, things like that, you know, those are needed for the upgraded versions and because the hybrids are out, that's kind of where they're shifting those those uh, supplies. Uh, I had a customer the other day told me, he said, hey, he said, do you, do you think that my order coming in is going to be a 2023 model? And he said he put the order in back in July and then they told him it was going to be about a year. So I am seeing 2023 allocations just kind of showing up in the system. Um, they're about a month out before they actually start hitting the ground. So if you, if any of you guys have got a vehicle on the way, <clears throat> if they uh, just got a build date for it, it's very likely going to be a 2023 model. Um, people are asking, well, what change are they going to make? Well, because it's a brand new vehicle, they're not going to make any changes to the vehicle unless it's to upgrade something. Like, and I'll give you an example. Um, if they've come out with a fix, and I haven't heard that they have, but if they've come out with a fix for like the platinum body side moldings that have been peeling off, if they've come up with a fix for that, then yes, maybe that's something that would get upgraded on the 2023. Um, but other than that, they're not going to make any changes to the vehicle. Uh, <clears throat> I want to address kind of people talking about ordering vehicles. I mentioned this in prior videos, but if you've not seen that video, Toyota asked us about three to four years ago not to not to order any vehicles. People are still putting in orders, and when I say they're putting in orders, they can put in what they call a preference. So with the preference, what happens is they put in, and let's say I, let's say somebody's looking for a 1794 edition gas version. So they put in a preference for it. They go in there, they specify the color and you know any unique features that they want on the vehicle other than standard equipment, and they put that, that preference in. Now, first off, that dealership has to have an allocation for that vehicle, otherwise it will never get built. The second thing is, if Toyota doesn't have exactly what they're looking for in that preference, then the truck doesn't get built. So with all these shortages of supplies going on, it's very unlikely that that truck's going to get built in any timely fashion. So what happens is, uh, Toyota doesn't build it in that allocation. So the next go around, that request is still sitting there. Let's say they don't fill it the next time or the next time or the next time. Pretty soon that dealership's just gonna get, a, I won't say they're gonna get frustrated, but they're just kind of put it to the back of the bus, so to speak. 
So they have to continue to put that, that request back in. Now, if you're one of 100 customers trying to do the same thing, do you think that the likelihood of having that one person standing in your corner trying to make sure that your truck gets billed on a timely fashion is, is going to be realistic? Probably not. So what I have mentioned to many, many viewers is that if you're looking to get a truck fairly soon, be a little bit flexible. I know we're spending a lot of money on vehicles and it's, it's tough to not get exactly what you want. But on the other hand, if you don't want to wait for a year to two years to get a vehicle, you know, if you are a little bit flexible, you know, maybe you can find somebody that already has something coming in that's very similar to what you're looking for. Now, another thing is that if, if a dealership, sorry, I'm popping my ears here because I'm headed up in elevation. Uh, if a dealership already has an allocation coming in and maybe it's the wrong color, as long as that vehicle hasn't been built and they still have like a week or two before uh, time for it to get built, they have the ability to go in there and, and do a, what they call a boss change. And a boss change could be something similar to like maybe changing the color or um, you know maybe you wanted to try to add like a, a tonneau cover or something. Those are things that they can request and sometimes a boss change works. And I'll say it probably works maybe 10, sometimes 20% of the time. Um, but keep in mind that it's not guaranteed. It's There's no guarantee that that's gonna happen for you. But that might be an alternative to, uh, you know, instead of holding out for a year or so, trying to get the vehicle that you want. Um, things keep changing all the time. You know, it's, I mentioned to you before, we used to be able to see within like the day or so of when the truck was going to arrive. So in the system, and I talked to a, uh, I talked to a person who's in charge of transportation at the port itself. And she said, you know, it keeps changing all the time. And she says, we're kind of like you, we can't see any more than what you can see. And so what happens is, I've meant, kind of broke it down before, but if anybody's first time viewing, so we get what they call an allocation. And in the allocation, we can see when the truck's going to be built. We can see all the equipment that they're planning on building on that truck. Now, in probably 95% of the time, Toyota just sends us whatever they want to send us. And so we don't have a whole lot of, uh, you know, sometimes if we see that there's maybe four trucks coming and they all happen to be the same color, well then we can go in there and request that they change the color on one or two of them, or maybe three. But uh, for the most part, they just send us whatever they want to. Anyway, in allocated status, we can see when the truck's going to be built. Now, once the truck actually gets built, then it, once it's uh, a couple of weeks away from the, the plant that it was produced at, it goes into what they call an F status. So F status means it's in transit. Um, we've seen some vehicles, depending on where it's built at, jump right into F status right after it's built. But on others, like I said, it could be two, sometimes three weeks, just depending on how it's coming. Now, a lot of the vehicles, like for instance on the Tundras, uh, and I'm in Oregon, so here in the Northwest, it gets trained from San Antonio all the way out to our port, which is in Portland. There's been a lot of fires in Idaho, and so that has slowed down the road cars a little bit. So, you know, it's, it's there again, it's tough. We can't see really what's going on until sometimes it just shows up. Uh, but occasionally it will show the last sighting. So like for instance, if it was sighted on a rail car, you know, sometimes it will show us where it's at and we can kind of track it that way. Once it hits the port, it can be a matter of just a few days or it can be several weeks before it actually gets delivered to the dealership. And that's the part where we kind of feel like we're in the dark end because, you know, we don't have any specific time frame. It just shows up whenever. So, Anyway, I appreciate you guys just taking the time to watch the videos. If there's anything I can help with, uh, you know, many of you have sent me your VIN number and I can kind of check the status on it. Sometimes I can't see any more than uh, what your own salesperson would see, uh, but sometimes they don't always have access to Dealer Daily like I do as well. So send me your VIN number if you want to. I'll be happy to check it out and uh, kind of give you that local update. Um, anyway, thanks again for watching the video. If you have any questions or comments, please take the time to uh, send them my way. Like and subscribe, and then share this with a friend as well. Thanks again for watching.